About a decade ago, there was a statement made by a creationist that was so stupid, it really got me into making videos on YouTube. That statement was... Scientists have been desperately trying to find water on other planets. However, the search is futile. Now, the reason this is dumb, of course, is water is the second most abundant molecule in the universe. It occurs all over our solar system. There was the Mars Global Surveyor probe, which has found evidence that water has been flowing on Mars within the last five years. Then, of course, there's the Mars Express probe, which has taken pictures of water ice on Mars and revealed massive deposits of water ice under the Martian poles. Then there's the Cassini-Huygens probe that has taken pictures of water ice on Titan. Three of the four large Jovian moons are composed mostly of water. It is likely that Europa has oceans under the frozen surface created by tidal heating from Jupiter, similarly with Ganymede and Callisto. Almost all the moons of Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are ice balls too, as are most of the comets. It's difficult to contrive that anyone can make a more uneducated statement on the status of water in the solar system than Scientists have been desperately trying to find water on other planets. However, the search is futile. So, someone sent me this tweet from Steve Malloy from a Twitter handle called Junk Science, co-founder of BurnMoreCoal.com. Trump EPA transition team. Yeah, I think you can see where this is going. And Fox News contributor, author of the book called Scare Pollution, how to fix the EPA with a poor little innocent child forced to wear a gas mask in clear blue skies and daisy fields. Yeah, like there's never been a reason to pass pollution laws. You know, there was never anything like the London smog which killed hundreds of people a day. There was never any acid rain caused by the coal burning power plants. There was no need for all of that CFC regulation that stopped these chlorofluorocarbons from depleting the ozone layer. Yeah, you know this tweet is going to set records for stupidity. This is an existential threat to the future of our planet. Insanity, he tweets. For comparison, the atmosphere of Venus is 96.5% carbon dioxide, and the planet is still there. In contrast, the Earth's atmosphere is only 0.04% carbon dioxide. Well, let's start with the obvious. There's no life on Venus. And the main reason there's no life on Venus is because of a runaway greenhouse effect. Look, let me make this simple. Imagine that you've got a planet with no atmosphere, and it's a fixed distance from a constant candle light source. Say, for instance, the sun. At a certain distance, you're going to get a certain surface temperature, and the further away you get from the sun, the cooler your planet's going to be. And that's what this theoretical curve looks like. The surface temperature of Venus should be a, a somewhat toasty 80 degrees Celsius. Good temperature for making tea at. But it's not a toasty 80 degrees Celsius. It's a rather toasty 400 degrees Celsius, more a temperature suitable for smelting lead. And the reason for that is a runaway greenhouse effect. The surface temperature is about 300 degrees hotter than you would otherwise expect. Look, this isn't even open for discussion. We know from satellite measurements that the carbon dioxide increase in the atmosphere is causing the Earth to radiate less energy into space than it used to. So inevitably, with any system where you've got more energy coming into the system than is going out from the system, it's going to get hotter. This is the reason why kettles get hotter when you turn them on, because you're putting more energy into them than they're radiating away. And this is the reason that something like 8 out of the 10 hottest years in recorded human history have occurred in the last decade. And every single one of the top 10 hottest years on record has occurred in the last 20 years. Obama is talking about all of this with the global warming and the, that. And a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money making industry, okay? It's a hoax. The president has tweeted climate change skepticism at least 115 times. It's like denying that putting energy into the kettle is the reason that the kettle is warming up. Nah, it's, it's, it's just a coincidence. It's just a, a hoax. And what do you get from the skeptics? Oh, trigger the libs, own the libs. And oh, wouldn't it be great if we could get Trump to tweet about Gamergate 2.0? Yeah, damn those educated, uh, 
elite and their ability to read graphs and understand energy balance. Now, nah, climate change is real and it's not going to go away. And the consequences are just going to get progressively more and more obvious, with one of the most important ones being the changes in the water patterns of the Earth we live on. People follow the water. They must do, because without it, people die within a few days. <laughs> this, this is one of the reasons why people can't live very long in the desert. Further, if you have no stable water supply, then you can't grow crops. You can't grow food. Now, the simple reality is we are the generation of plenty. We've never experienced hunger. We've never experienced lack of food. We've never seen a supermarket that looks like this. But seriously, look back into history. Historically, one failed crop and all of a sudden you realize just how slender the thread we all hang by is. This is one of the reasons why people mostly follow the water, and therein is your biggest threat from climate change. Changes in the water pattern. As just one example, the glaciers melting isn't just a, oh, that's a kind of curiosity we're going to lose type thing. There is a huge amount of water stored there. So what typically happens is during the winter, snow falls on the mountains, and in the summer, most of it progressively melts off. It essentially provides a water storage system, a water buffer for the rest of the year when you might need that water. And in drought years, that buffer becomes doubly important. Now, of course, if there is no snow on the mountains in winter, you don't get those glaciers and that buffer is gone. You get no extra water for the rest of the year. One good drought and you're in serious trouble. Now, if you're rich, of course, that's probably not that big of a deal because you can just move somewhere where there's water. If you're poor, however, you're kind of screwed. You can't just move thousands of miles to get some water. And as from a nature paper stated from 2005, with more than one sixth of the Earth's population relying on glaciers or seasonal snowpack for their water supply, the consequences of these hydrological changes for future water availability predicted with high confidence are already diagnosed in some regions are likely to be severe. In fact, this was one of my ideas that I never quite got around to this year, was to make a bet with a leading climate denier for, say, one kilo of gold. That's about $40,000. Yeah, sure, that's a lot of money for me. But then again, this is an important issue for the planet. By the way, there was a complete and total dead stop to all global warming for over 15 years. And rather than readjust their models, current climate scientists employed by your tax dollars simply chalk it up to being the pause. <laughs> yes, if you want a real touch of irony. Yes, that was Stephen Crowder claiming there's been a total dead stop in global warming. You can see the one he's talking about, right? So he could release this video not only in the hottest year in recorded history, but in the hottest August in recorded history. Now, there might be people out there saying, hang on, you're being a little unfair to Stephen here. After all, he didn't know at the time that 2016 was going to be the hottest year in recorded human history. Of course, if it had actually bothered to check, he would have found that 2015 had previously been the hottest year in recorded human history. And even if he hadn't been paying attention to that, it was the hottest January in recorded history. It was the hottest February in recorded history. It was the hottest March in recorded history. The hottest April, the hottest May, the hottest June, the hottest July, and the hottest August in recorded human history. History. By the way, there was a complete and total dead stop to all global warming for over 15 years. And rather than readjust their models, current climate scientists employed by your tax dollars simply chalk it up to being the pause. So the bet would go along these lines, that I bet you one kilo of gold that this year will be one of the hottest 10 years in recorded human history. Now, if there is no climate change, you would expect to have about a 9 in 10 chance of losing that bet. However, in reality, this is a bet you would have won 95% of the time for the last 40 years. Or even better, if you were to make the bet that this year will be one of the hottest 
top 20 years in recorded history. Then, if there was no global warming, you would expect to have about a 5 in 6 chance of losing that bet. I mean, just for the record. 1998 was the hottest year on record. Then 2005 was the hottest year on record. Then 2010, then 2014, then 2015, and now 2016 was the hottest year on record. In reality, this is a bet you would have won every single year for the last 40 years. Now, sure, this is a nice way of getting rich if only you can find a climate denier who's got money and is really committed to the lie. However, I've got a greater sense of irony than that. I would donate all winnings to climate research. So what do you say, Trump, if you really believe this is a hoax, this would be easy money for you? It would produce, on average, an 80% return on investment per year. If only you believed that it was all a hoax. Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and that, and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. Go up, it'll get a little cooler, it'll get a little warmer like it always has for millions of years. I don't believe that what they say, I think it's a big scam for a lot of people to make a lot of money. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord However, if it's not a hoax, you're going to lose every single time. Every single time. And if you like that as an idea, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you really like this channel, you can support it through Patreon. And I'll leave the links below.